Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to do a quick video on how to use checkboxes and radio buttons in your masked simulink blocks. I'm going to assume you're familiar with the concept of simulink libraries and masked blocks. If not, feel free to check out our video which covers these exact topics. So just to jump into it, I've got my library over here on the left of the side of the screen. I've just called it my library and in this I've got just a very simple uh, masked block. In fact, the mask of this is empty. So let's go ahead and edit the mask right now now because what we want to do with this mask is I want to be able to use a checkbox so I'm gonna come here and add a checkbox and maybe I want this to prompt the user and allow the user to say you know is the cruise control of this system on so I'll just prompt cruise control on question mark and then in the name I'm just going to change this to whatever name of the variable I want to be passed into the mask block so I'm gonna call this how about cruise control Okay, so if we hit OK there, now if I go into the mask underneath of it, I can now just go ahead and pull up a constant block, call this thing cruise control, and let's make this a little bit bigger, hook this up, and it's really that simple. I should now be able to get, this is going to be a value of 0 or 1, depending if that is uh, unchecked or checked, respectively. So just to prove that, let's go ahead and use this block over here in an actual model. So over here on the right side of the screen, I've got my model, my Simulink model, that I've called mymodel.slx. I'll go ahead and save this, and let's go ahead and hook this up to a display. Okay. And notice here that I actually have turned on... Uh, my port data types just so I can see what data type is being used here um, okay so as you can see right here we get a one because I've got a checkbox with a check mark if I uncheck this and run this again now it's a zero so let's get back to that data type as you can see this is a basically a zero or a one so maybe it makes a little bit more sense to come back to my library and change this constant to have an output data type of instead of a double maybe a boolean is fine Right, because this is a real simple operation. So coming back to my model on the right, running this again, yep, we still get a we change the data type to a boolean and we still get the same behavior where I can now change the values. Okay, so coming back to the library, you know what? You may want to have more than one checkbox, and that's just as easy. So let's come over here to the mask. I will edit the mask one more time. Let's come here to our parameters, and now let's go ahead and add another checkbox. So I will add one. It looks like I need to reorder these. Whoops. I pulled it out. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. Okay, how about this second one? How about we'll say, uh, how about windshield wipers on? So we're going to let the user decide if the windshield wiper should be on or, or if they're on or off. So let's go ahead and call this, how about windshield wipers? There we go. Hit OK. And uh, come into the mask. And again, I guess I'm just going to copy all of this. Drag, drop, copy. And I'm going to now call this, how about windshield wipers? There we go. That's passed in. I will call this, how about wipers? Uh, go up, save the library. Here we go. It automatically updated the model, so I don't even have to uh, update it. And if I just copy this display down now, save again, we should see I've now got two checkboxes. So I can now do these independently. So again, let's do uh, off and on and hit run and there we go so this I think illustrates how to use checkboxes with your mask system and we see it just gets passed in as a one or a zero so that's pretty simple why don't we talk about now uh, radio buttons all right so radio buttons function very similarly so again I've made myself a very simple empty block with a uh, blank mask so let's go ahead and mask uh, edit the mask on this block and and go ahead and now let's go ahead and use a radio button so here I'll click on radio button and now let's say that I want this radio button to be allow the user to choose a different type of vehicle so what vehicle does this uh, block represent so in the name I'll go ahead and type vehicle that's sort of the the category and now in order to display the different options in the radio button I need to come down here under type options and I'll click on this button here and what I can do is I can start listing the different types of vehicles. So I can say aircraft, how about boat, car. Yeah, there we go, A, B, C. That seems pretty reasonable. Hit OK. And uh, in the prompt here, we'll just say, what type of vehicle is this? OK. And if I go ahead and apply that, and I look at the mask, here we go. 
this looks reasonable, right? Aircraft, boat, car. So now again, the question is, how does that get passed underneath the mask so I can use it for some logic? Well, again, just coming down to uh, look under the mask, I'll go ahead and pull up a constant. And again, I'm going to call this, I think we called it vehicle. This was the name of the uh, radio box group here, the name of that parameter. Let me just bring this a little bit larger. So if I connect this up, now let's go ahead, go up a level. And again, I will bring this over to my model so I can actually use this. And I'll grab another display, hook this up. And let's put the, yeah, here, how about on, on aircraft to start? So running this, you see you get a one. If I change this to boat, it's just a two. <laughs> and moving it to car is a three. So again, you see, it's just an integer value. It's basically the index of whatever option um, that corresponds to this radio button is what gets uh, output. And again, data type wise, maybe it doesn't make the most sense for this to be a double because yeah, this is just an integer. So I'll come over here to the library and maybe let's change this to an unsigned eight bit integer. That seems pretty reasonable and uh, we get very similar behavior. So again, you can have more than one set of radio buttons in your mask. So let's quickly do that again. So I'll come over here to my mask. I'll go ahead, edit this mask again, come here to uh, this group, and maybe let's add another radio button. Maybe now what I want the second radio button to be is uh, what type of propulsion is used. Okay, so I will go and change this param the name of it to uh, propulsion. And again, to start listing off different ones, I just need to come here to type options, click on the button here, and I could say gas, electric, uh, hybrid, uh, how about uh, squirrel? Maybe you're, you've got a squirrel running around in there, that might be an option. You hit OK. And again, now we see we've got a second set of radio buttons. So again, let's come underneath the, the mask and I will copy this group just to illustrate that this works. And I think we need to change this now to the variable propulsion, All right? And then I'll call this, uh, yeah, how about propulsion? That's the same, oh, and I totally spelled that wrong. Propulsion, there we go, okay, let's try that. Go up, save the library, it updated on this end. Let's go ahead and connect these together. And now we can have a mix of different variables and different radio buttons pushed and you get the different variables. So again, this was a very simplistic uh, example, but I think it shows you how to get those variables or get those choices that are either being made in a checkbox by a user or being made by a radio button by a user down underneath the mask so you can use them for additional logic. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've been a long time subscriber, thanks for sticking with us. If you're new to the channel, Consider subscribing, please, because we'll have lots of other different videos on Simulink tips and tricks, as well as control systems engineering in the future. I hope to catch you then. Talk to you later. Bye.